Welcome back. You're watching Stockwatch with me, Zinati Kuma. And joining me to unpack your stock-related questions tonight are Roy Motooni from Sanlam Investments and Rikas Rieders from PSG Hall in One Reimsach. Uh, be sure to send your questions via email to stockwatch at bdtv.co.za or via SMS on 41392 or on X at Business Day TV using the hashtag Stockwatch. Uh, gents, let's get, uh, let's get uh, straight to it. Uh, a lot of questions are on gold today. Uh, there's a, yeah, so let's just go straight into it. Gold miners, um, which shares would be the best to buy in order to hopefully take advantage of the current gold price? Um, I want to start with you, Rikus. Would you want to take advantage is there an opportunity to actually take advantage of the gold momentum at this point in time if you're very brave yes i mean gold's almost at uh was it three thousand dollars an ounce um it's it's at a new high and and i like things which are at new highs because it confirms a trend that being said we all know how volatile um the gold price can be and as a result how volatile gold shares can be. So uh, if you think that there's still more room for gold shares to move up um, upwards, yes, um, you can buy in because the trend is up. But just make very sure that you first of all decide where you're going to sell. And by that, I, and I, and I mean with that, that you have to say, well, if what I've bought drops, you know, 10 or 15 percent or whatever, then I get out because then obviously I was wrong. So you just have to be very careful that you put a mental stop loss in place um, um, should you want to buy gold right now mm. or at least um, gold mining shares. Yeah. Uh, well, there's a question. As a first time investor, I've heard people say gold and gold stocks are a safe haven. Do you want to go into gold as a first time investor, Rory? Um, okay, I, I struggle to understand who told him it was a safe haven. Um, but I think over the long term, what gold is, it's, it's a hedge against inflation. Mm -hmm. Remember, the, the, the operational word for gold is that it earns no income. Um, and over time, it's considered a store of value. So from that perspective, it's considered pretty safe. But when, when, you, when you're looking at it right now, it's like Rico said, if, you, if you're going in now, after this huge rally has mm -hmm. has happened, basically what you're saying is that not all the knowns have been priced in, or there are some mm -hmm. unknowns that are yet to be priced in, and you're hoping for the price to go higher up. If what you're looking for is a store of value, um, and you're afraid of where inflation is going to go, by all means. The scary thing right now is that we're at all-time highs, um, and while the momentum may be behind it, at these, at, at these prices, you're... The, the biggest problem is a, a slight change in the narrative can result in a massive sell-off in the stock. So you've got in, in in the commodity. So you've got to be really careful and very clear about why you're coming in. If you're following momentum, by all means, but understand that stop loss is very clear, very important in in, in your mind. Mm. That's actually a very interesting way to look at it. You need to be clear uh, mm -hmm. on the reasons for going into it, whether you're looking for a store of mm -hmm. value or uh, if you're looking to gain further upside. And uh, some would think that maybe the easy money has been made at this point. But I want to go into the, the specific gold miners. Um, mm -hmm. the, the viewer says, I was considering gold fields, Anglo gold, or Sibanye. Is there a better pick? Uh, let's start off with Sibanye, Rikus. Uh, would you be going into Sibanye for gold, considering the proportion of PGMs that it has? Yeah, that's that's the one fundamental um, reason why I wouldn't concentrate in Sabanya if I think that gold is going to be the in metal to be and not the platinum group of metals. But um, you know, we were just talking about at the moment, gold and gold shares are momentum plays, and the only way to do that because we're looking at short term you know whether it be next week or next month or a few months from now this momentum cannot continue indefinitely but seeing that we are in a momentum market what i do and this is my personal way of doing this i just look at a graph and if i do that then harmony is the obvious 
um, choice in the South African market as the better momentum play. So if I want to take advantage of an upwards momentum, that's the one I would I, I would go for. Not that I think it's the best operational choice, the best fundamental choice, but mm. I'm just looking at price. Mm. Uh, Roy, on your side, um, Sibanye, which I don't know if it should be part of this list, uh, or Goldfields or Anglo Gold, um, yeah, Rika says he'd rather go for Harmony. If you are going to play in that gold space, in that gold mining space, yeah. where would you be looking to? So, so I think you have to ratchet it. The, the base way of playing gold is through the ETF GLD that gives you direct exposure to dollar-denominated gold. And, that, and that's a simple one, very similar to having your gold bullion, putting it under your bed and waiting and seeing. When you go into the stocks, what you're doing is you're entering into a leveraged position. So the stocks tend to exaggerate the movement in gold, especially the deep level mining, um, mining stocks. So Harmony would be perfect from, from that perspective. Low margin, deep level, RAND, um, with, with RAND costs, dollar revenue. Mm. Um, Sibanye, the, prob the one problem with Sibanye is your gold exposure is diluted by your platinum exposure. And remember, they've got marginal mines, so they've got great leverage but also great risk there as well. So, so you, basically what you're doing is you're ratcheting on risk when you go higher and higher that, that curve. So, so you start from bullion in your pocket, then you go to the ETF, then, then you go to rand, rand cost dollar revenue stocks like Harmony, then you go to the globally diversified ones like Anglo Gold or Goldfields. Anglo Gold has just moved their domicile, they're going to they're going to be listed in the U.S. Maybe there's a new marginal buyer there, so that's something to th to listen, um, something to think about. They've got low cost, lo low cost production that 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 I think has given them a little bit more life than was previously ascribed to them. So that's something that may have some level of operational underpin. I think the bottom line here is think about it this way: hmm. even even these stocks have need to have a valuation underpin. And as it stands right now, relative to fundamentals, they have really moved. And they've moved quite far and they look expensive. If you're a momentum investor, that doesn't bother you. But I keep saying um, that, you see, the train's already on the move. The stock is already rising. Lots of people are already in it. So a lot of the good news has been factored in. So it's a great risk that you might be the one who they're all going to sell to after everything has been, after everything has been taken, uh, uh, taken account for. Hmm. But I mean, mm. uh, though, would it be, uh, I mean, just aside from gold, just considering mm -hmm. what is happening right now with the, the resource mm -hmm. counters, particularly the PGMs mm -hmm. even today, um, Rigas uh, yeah. and Roy, it seems like we, we've reached the bottom. I'm not, yeah, I don't know if anybody can really point it out <laughs> if we have reached <laughs> a bottom in that. <laughs> Rikus is <laughs> vehemently <laughs> shaking his head. Um, <laughs> if you want to go into that PGM space, Rikus, I mean, would Sibanya be a, an option right now considering where, where we are currently? Um, yeah, well, as you said, I... I don't pick bottoms because I can't. I don't think anybody can. Um, bottoms are easy to pick in hindsight, but but not at the moment or at that specific moment. Um, yeah, there's been a lot of bad news surrounding Sabania. So that sentiment in itself, if that turns around, it can provide impetus to the share price in the same way in which the negative sentiment um, caused a huge sell-off um, in Sabania, so so that in itself, I think, would, would make it an interesting play. If you want to play it a little bit more safe, then um, then Anglo-American Platinum would be my choice. It's not the um, it's it's far less volatile than the than Implats and and Sabania, and a lot safer should you be wrong. Mm. But in the end, um, a precious metals miner is never an investment; it's always a trading vehicle. Mm. Um, so if we do get a rally in platinum group metals, the safer bet would be Anglo-American, just in case you're wrong. Otherwise, yeah, why not go for Sabania, considering how bad the news has been? Mm. We're actually just talking about Anglo-American platinum. I did have a conversation earlier on, uh, also touching on the... <coughs> 
kind of restructuring uh, that's happening there in the broader Anglo-American group um, and the cost cutting and the uh, production cuts that are being made there in that whole group. Uh, do you think at this point Roy Anglo-American Platinum maybe um, is standing in a much better position or positions itself to be in a better uh, position in the medium term at this point and would this be one that you'd be looking at if you are going into that PGM space? This one's considered the high quality play. They, they pay out a big dividend, a reasonable dividend to the parent. Um, and exactly like you say, they've undergone quite a bit of restructuring over time. So yes, it's well worth looking at. But remember the bottom line here is you're playing the commodity. These are just vehicles for playing that commodity price movement. So if, if you want proper leverage to that commodity, whether uh, specifically platinum, you're probably going to be in an Impala or Sibanya. If you want the quality plays, um, that would be Anglo-American. Um, and Northern's also quite a low cost, steady producer as well. So, so if you're confident on the platinum price and the outlook for the platinum market, that's you, you spread it out among all of those rather than just taking one and i guess hope your thesis pans out mm. um mm -hmm. yeah and just i think we have about a minute before we go to break um just to close mm -hmm. off the <laughs> the commodities <laughs> conversation anglo-american the group uh Rikis, um of course with all this you know restructuring um i know that it did have a bad time uh, at some point last year um it was a surprise in terms of the production cuts, but the CEO came out um, with the whole, uh, you know, strategy revamp. Um, and it seems that investors are kind of coming back into the stock. Do you think that there is, um, you know, some upside, um, significant upside to that stock? Yeah, I think I think with most commodity stocks at the moment, we are transitioning, I think, into a rally. That's just my personal opinion. Okay. Anglo Americans got the added. Um, possibility of a corporate action may be a bit for the company itself. Uh, all right. On your side, uh, Roy, would you be looking at the broader, the, the, the parent group there? So the, what the parent group gives you is diversity across a number of minerals. One of the things that they've done, I mean, one of the bits of their track record, which I think people like, is that when, when they've discovered like a big field or something, rather than keeping it to themselves and taking on the risk of all of that, CapEx have tended to find partners who bring in capital and, and they de-risk the project in that way. So from that perspective, you can see that um, they're, they're very conscious about risk. They're very conscious about capital. Um, they, they've acted quite early um, around the costs. And then relative to the others, the, relative to the other diversified miners, this stock has sold off quite significantly and, and is probably only catching a bit now. So it's well worth looking at, that's for sure. Uh, all right. Uh, I want to come to uh, Cap Industrial. I'm not sure if this is one that uh, you gents uh, closely look at. Can you please give me a view of Cap Industrial? This share seems to uh, be going nowhere. Uh, Roy, <laughs> is this one that you look at uh, at any point? Um, yes, from from mm -hmm. a bit of a distance. So this this one sold off significantly. I mean, if you looked at it three, four years ago, it was at seven, eight rand, and it's come all the way down. And that was because they made an acquisition in the chemical side, and it doesn't seem to have worked out, or they could have caught the cycle at the wrong point. Um, their, their debt levels rose significantly, working capital rose, and then they started having problems with other operations. So like Unitrans, which is a logistics business that they own, which was previously um, a premium business um, within that industry, seems to be struggling. And every time they cut costs, it seems to just become smaller and make bigger losses. So it's a business in transition. The management team has their hands full They've, they've committed to reducing working capital and reducing debt and to find a solution around Unitrans and that chemical um, th that chemical cycle issue. So it's complex. Mm -hmm. It looks like they have a process in place where they they probably will end up fixing the business. But that's that's why your viewers observed. It's, it's not that it's going nowhere. It's just that there's a huge transition on the go and it's not clear how it comes out. I mean, from a price perspective, it's... It's cheap relative to where it, it's been before, 
but you'd be betting on the management team, the chemical cycle, um, and the ability for the management team in conjunction with the chemical cycle and the operating restructuring all working out around the same time. Um, mm. I suppose it's a, it's a question of choose your poison. Ah, ah, all right. Well, <laughs> another question of choose your poison, but in the AI space, uh, mm -hmm. Rigas, uh, NVIDIA versus AMD, which would you prefer as a hold, if any? Um, yeah, I think it's it's they're the same business but different products. Um, I prefer AMD, and the only real reason is because I think the narrative surrounding NVIDIA is um, overdone. It's, I'm not saying they're not going to have great results going forward. There's an obvious demand. There's an obvious sh um, shortage of worldwide for the for the for the kind of chips that they that they supply to market. I just think that a lot of that has been priced in. And um, not if something goes wrong, it's something slightly disappoints. One can see a lot of a sell-off in that, whereas um, I think um, AMD has been left behind in the hype. Not that AMD is specifically cheap, it's just priced more sensibly, in my opinion. Sticking with you, Rikas, um, are the markets uh, shrugging off the geopolitical tensions in that space? Um, Between China probably... and the US? <laughs> um, well, a lot of that sort of depends on, on uh, what happens with the American um, election later this year and, and, and what proposed policy changes can be affected depending on um, who wins the Senate, who wins the House of Rep Representatives. But there's no doubt that... Um, America is increasing its, shall we say, boycott of China. Mm. Um, and I can't see that trend turning all of, all of a sudden. Um, in a sense, um, both China and the US are turning more and more insular and drifting further away from each, from each other as far as dialogue is concerned. Part of it is because of um, the political setup in China, which is effectively now a one ruler state and and then also the discourse in the united states which is having its own internal struggle struggle between shall we say left and right if we want to make it very very elementary mm. yeah all right um roy is there a preference there uh is this even a, a space that you you are keen on uh considering where valuations are between nvidia and amd I mean, for me, the, the the train left the station a long time ago. Um, <laughs> the, the the valuations are really stretched, and it's literally um, a bet into the future about and and what people are speculating on is how big this AI thing can be. I think there's many ways of playing the AI thing. The chip is probably the easiest uh, or rather most intuitive way of playing it. But where those valuations are, the, it's really promising a lot. And, mm. and to me, when it gets to that point, I think you're in the world of speculating rather than investing. Ah, all right. There have been uh, lots mm -hmm. of questions actually surrounding uh, the implications of the AI boom. Yesterday we had a question on um, because uh, these data centers um, require a lot of electricity. So which counters would you pick that would uh, benefit from that uh, increase in demand in electricity? Today, there is another question on it. So with the meteoric rise in AI industries, there has also been a similar rise in AI-driven malicious and fraudulent activities. Will this impact the stellar growth in the legit AI activities going forward? Rick, has any idea? Um, yeah, let's, let's, let's step back a couple of decades. Mm -hmm. The increase in, the, um, in viruses being distributed via the internet didn't stop the growth of the internet. Mm -hmm. And um, I think one can have a similar argument as to as towards, shall we say, bad AI and good AI. Mm -hmm. mm, all right, I hear you on that. But now, does this then maybe uh, skew one's money towards you know your cybersecurity stocks and the like that have also been doing quite well, Roy? 
Look, I, th I think Rickers is absolutely correct. If, if you look at the beginning of the internet, um, the, 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 the dark web was formed. Um, then people also s couldn't tell what was going to make money. So those things like pets.com and different sorts of websites and everything. And over time, it, um, it sorted itself out. I mean, Cisco was effectively the NVIDIA that we have right now. Its valuation flew. They became incredibly profitable, but the share price between then and now has done absolutely nothing. Mm. So picking the winners is incredibly, incredibly difficult because you're, you're, you're trying to paint a picture of an unknown future. So um, the, the good and the bad will live together, just like in Bitcoin. Um, some criminals use it, some normal citizens use it. I, I think the point is figuring out what your investment case is um, what your outlook is and what is the best way to, ac to, to actualize the two of them and then be able to at least have a stab at having a fair value for what it is that you want to achieve. That way, that, that way at least you know it. when it goes wrong, you know it's going wrong. The problem of jumping onto momentum, exactly like what Rika said at the beginning, you don't know where your stop loss is. Maybe it keeps going, maybe it falls, maybe it's time to double down, who knows? You have to know your investment thesis from the beginning. If you don't, you're not investing, you're speculating. Well, I guess maybe then it, 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 that answers uh, this question uh, that came through. How can I diversify my portfolio even in risky times? Um, <laughs> yeah, so Rikas, would there be anything to add on that? Is this even uh, an answerable question? Yeah, um, it probably... Depends on what you think a risky time is. In other words, what are you afraid of? Are you afraid that the that AI stocks have have, have run too far? Or are you afraid that you're going to miss out on an industry that you're not even aware of? So it comes back to the old age old answer: make sure that you are diversified through industries and geographically. Mm. You don't have to be afraid. You have to see. You have to try and cater for. Um, most situations because if you're afraid of one thing you're missing out on a possible opportunity somewhere else if you're diversified you don't have to be afraid mm, all right so industries and geographies there's a question here particularly on uh, copper 360 um, but I mean this is one that a, a lot of analysts really don't look at um, new on mm -hmm. the market um, yeah, should uh, Roy should investing in copper be a, a scary thing or a, a thing where there's a lot of optimism considering the fundamentals of supply and demand that exist there? So, so copper has come into the into the reckoning because of its relevance in as an industrial metal and the fact that the green economy is going to require a lot of copper into the future and there's not enough that's been discovered and everything. That's that's that, that's the bottom line now. Which company, um, which stage of development, and all of that do you play? That's the hardest question, and that's yeah. and and that's where investors need to pick out. You could be somebody who does well in developmental early stage companies, and maybe that's what you, what's what you want to watch. Or you could want to be in a proven reserve, proven mine area, like and and that would be some of the diversified miners. So again, it goes back to your risk appetite. But one thing which I'd like to add here is. How do you define risk? So in the short term, you have a lot of volatility and you could say you're afraid of that volatility. Over time, that volatility pans away and as more information comes, you get more and more certainty. So you, mm -hmm. you have to understand where you as an investor should stand in, in terms of risk and uncertainty. If you're very risk averse, if you don't want too much uncertainty, maybe you want to be in a business that has five or six commodities in proven in proven mines or if you really want to take a big swing go into the uraniums and the and the coppers which are single mine highly committed uh, and and you're making a big bet on the short to medium term mm, all right well gents we have run out of time let's get to your stock picks Rikas, what are you picking today against my own trend in case i'm wrong um i've been pretty negative about this african economy in general but in case I'm wrong and um, things start going better, then the obvious choice would be infrastructure and the obvious share would be Robex. 
So um, it's highly cyclical, so it's almost like a commodity. Don't forget to sell when it rallies, if it rallies. But, um, yeah, as I said, you know, if I'm too overly pessimistic, just in case I'm wrong, I think Robex is sitting at a good valuation and also technically at a good point. Diversification right there. Uh, let's get to your stock pick for today, Roy Watalapi. My, my pick for today is Advertech. Um, it's been on a bit of a run. Um, earnings have grown really well, but it just seems to be a business that's executing incredibly well in a space where demand is huge. Um, I think demand is inflexible. The, the competition is struggling to a greater or less extent. You've seen some of their competitors being taken out of the market. And education, the way they've the, the way the way they've invested in it is an absolute need. They've also participated very well in the XSA world, so they've opened for themselves another growth another growth avenue in case SA does slow down. Um, and it's not particularly expensive. So to me, it's quite a predictable um, cash generative high dividend pair that's continuing to grow. Again, like Rickers. Yeah, if 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 SA is to do well, yeah. I guess a, a company like Advertech would. Ah, uh, all right. Well, thank you so much mm -hmm. for your time and for your analysis today, gents. Really appreciate it. That is all for tonight's stock watch. Uh, thanks to our guests, Roy Mutoni from Sunlam Investments and Rikas Rieres from PSG Hall One Reimsuth. Up next, the close. Stay with us. Mm -hmm.